Mr. Fowler and Mr. Morris. I'm not the Oscar winner, he is. No, I didn't win, I was nominated. Nominated, okay. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> it, would it be fair to say you have more experience than he has? Because he seems to be just out of kindergarten. Well, <laughs> you seem to be a little bit older. You're saying I'm very old. No! <laughs> I feel old. Really? No, I don't actually, no, I don't. If you deal with animation, can you feel old? No. No. So, I, I'm, 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 I'm very curious and we don't have much time. Um, we have one question prepared right in the beginning. We was asked just once and then we will never ask again. You but just asked uh, it. That was it, right? Yeah. I think we're, we're done here, guys. <laughs> right? I just meeting you all. Before we, we <laughs> give the floor to you, uh, um, I would like to know this maybe so as an icebreaker. Um, why, is he a good, why is he a good director and why do you think is he a good producer? Um, I think he's a good director because he has an incredible amount of patience, uh, truly a very clear creative direction of what he wants to do, uh, and knows how to actually make that happen. Um, it's one thing to have an idea of what you want, but the other thing is how do you actually make it happen, and uh, his experience in uh, working in animation all these years has let me turn off my phone, sorry, yeah. uh, has, my has allowed him to figure out and know how to make it actually happen, how to get on screen what he wants. And they had a little bit more time to think about my question. Yeah. Why is he a good producer? Uh, I mean, aside from the fact that Neil has just uh, an embarrassing amount of experience making movies. I mean, how many have you done now? I don't know, 60 or so? <laughs> um, so I, but on top of that, I just, it, it was incredible to me just how deeply Neil cared about movie 61, uh, mm -hmm. which, uh, I mean, was so supportive of me as a first time director, just fought so hard for everything in the movie uh, to get us the best of everything, the best cast, the best crew. I mean, if I have a question for him in an email or a text, I don't think it's ever been gone longer than four or five minutes before I get an answer. I mean, he's just so engaged. And for him to, to be working that hard, uh, again, this uh, on Movie 61, like, I just, it, 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 you just don't see that. So I, I just felt incredibly fortunate to have him as my producer on Sonic. It's interesting because even though I've made so many movies and we've luckily had a lot of success with the movies we've been involved in, I really do take each movie like it's my first movie, yeah. and it could be my last movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, you know, somebody was asking me, "Well, what's your favorite movie?" And I was like, "I don't really have a favorite movie. They're kind of all my kids." And really, how I judge each movie, uh, you know, I've made uh, is whatever life experience I had during the making of that film, and we just had such a good time making the movie, even though there was a lot of difficulties like there are on any movie. Uh, we kind of all were very united in making, you know, in trying to make what we wanted uh, to be on the screen, and, you know, we're really thrilled with the, with the results of what we have on the screen. Um, I live in Germany, and we have some attempts, we tried to do some family entertainment movies in the past, and don't have a look at them. Um, so I'm, I was uh, I was amazed how well uh, that came off because uh, when I read about the movie on the internet, which is a very interesting place yes. to find uh, interesting yes, it text, is. <laughs> uh, um, there's a lot of things happened. So we have one question about that, and then we go on to. I mean, can I, I just address about that? We really. One, I had, I have my my children are 17 and 13 now, and I've had to sit through a lot of movies with them that were really tough as a parent to watch. I just could yeah. not get involved in it all. And what we decided was is is that we wanted to make a family film that truly everybody in the family could enjoy, kids and adults. And that's that's how we approached this movie from the very beginning. For if you were a hardcore Sonic fan, you could enjoy the movie. And if you didn't know anything about Sonic, you can enjoy the movie. And if you were a boy or a girl or an adult, you could still enjoy the movie. We tried to have something uh, for everybody because I just remember all those painful times of sitting through movies with my kids that I just couldn't watch. Now, they might have liked it, but I couldn't watch it. The only thing I was looking forward to is maybe I got a nap. 
you know. Uh, so that's in that's Germany, how you, you are function. brain dead. Okay, if you that's see fine. a preschool <laughs> film from Germany, you are as a parent, you are brain dead afterwards. <laughs> and per perhaps you're a child if you sit lucky or she's lucky. Now you have me curious. I have to see some no. of these. <laughs> send me send me no, 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 some no, no. titles. <laughs> My flight back. Uh, I didn't I didn't have a can, chance can to sleep give you a, right a, here, a, but the last four things I saw. Uh, we have oh, unbelievable. <laughs> don't. Please don't. It would be embarrassing for me. Uh, one question. <laughs> Hi guys. Um, um, I think we're all very interested in knowing uh, how it was to redesign this and um, everything we read online. For both of you and you being your um, uh, debut as a, as a director, mm -hmm. um, uh, tell us a little about the experience and also if you believe that this unprecedented move started a trend in filmmaking, <coughs> listening to the fans, changing things accordingly. Could you elaborate on that please? You want to answer first? Uh, yeah, well I'll just say about the redesign. I mean the message was so clear. Uh, it, it actually made it very easy. I mean, there was not a lot of debate on our side. It was like, okay, we, we need to do this. We, we love the movie. We don't want the, the whole uh, the, the conversation to be dominated by this, this design question. And so we just got to work. And in a weird way, it actually brought our team like closer together. And, and, and again, we were so excited about the movie. Uh, we just didn't want this design thing to be the, the final word on it. And so it just really brought everyone together and, and got them focused and, 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 when, and as it was sort of coming together, I mean, you just really got this great momentum and then we released the second trailer and it was just, yeah, it was just this sort of watershed moment of like, uh, I mean, it was relief, uh, it was excitement. I mean, I actually wrote a note to all of the animators uh, the day the trailer, the second trailer came out and just said, thank you, like you guys are the ones that really made this possible. and. They don't, those, I mean, I come from visual effects, I come from animation, like oftentimes they're the sort of unsung heroes, the, they're the ones that are sort of the last, uh, at the end of the process, the ones to deliver uh, the movie uh, and make the final all the visual effects. And I just, I, I had to thank them because I just thought the work they did was so incredible on the reason I just wanted to make sure that they, that, that they, felt heard and appreciated. It, it was planned all the time. We said, you know, <laughs> that was not room right there. But no, uh, I mean, honestly, it was, it was just, we, we heard the reaction. We were like, they're right. And mm -hmm. we want to uh, uh, make a movie that honors Sonic's tradition and who his character uh, is. And uh, there was no hesitation on our point, and we just did it. Like, we got to work, we rolled up our sleeves, and we made it happen. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I think the proof is in the pudding. I, you know, couldn't be happier with how it turned out, and um, it was so thrilling for us to see the reaction of the people once the uh, second trailer dropped. Mm -hmm. uh, quick follow-up from my side because it's like uh, Christopher Plummer taking over uh, and, and playing a part which was designed for somebody else. Um, did it change the the tone of the film? Because I think uh, the, the new design even works better in this father-son relationship because. The, the I mean, it's much more relatable well, as a child. Yeah, well, it was still Ben Schwartz, and that was the nice thing about it. So the performance was consistent. It wasn't like we were reconceiving him as a character. Like mm -hmm. he still fit into the story in the same way. It, it was. It <coughs> really was just sort of the the actual visual of it all. Because we really loved the work Ben had done. We were so excited about the sort of movie version of Sonic. So just getting a little bit of the of the of the uh, design aesthetic worked out was was uh, was really the, that was the, just the important thing because at the heart of the, at the heart of the movie it's it's a movie about friendship uh, a lot of different friendships but it's you know obviously a big family movie with an, a lot of comedy a lot of action but really you don't care about a movie unless you have a heart and the heart of this movie is those relationships and uh, i think that that's what makes it, it special is it easy to find because you have so many uh, masters, uh, so many people to serve? You have Sega who will protect their uh, 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 product, and then you have to now you have to keep in mind how the fans are there also. And you yourself, as there was, there you was have an enormous risk. Yeah, I'm doing something like there that. Was, there was there was just you know kind of in our inner circle of Sega and Paramount and the filmmakers and. There was just there was a lot of trust. I mean, honestly, they put a lot of trust in us, and we just felt uh, we had to deliver. This was obviously as a very beloved uh, character, and we wanted the audience to be satisfied, and that was our number one goal: is to make a really good, entertaining, action-packed, comedic film with a lot of heart that that really satisfied uh, the audience. 
Yeah. Really respect for that. Yeah, we, you know, honestly, it was, it, it was like a <coughs> gut reaction immediately, like, you know, myself, Jeff, and the, kind of the inner circle, like, we're, we were just like, we're doing it. Like, we didn't ask anybody. Uh, we just, Hence we, my we, tweets. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, I had a few voicemails <laughs> that afternoon, I'll tell you. But everybody, but everybody. Oh, yeah. Oh, I just. I but everybody, honestly, everybody was completely <laughs> supportive. We, mm -hmm. you know, something as divisive as this could cause a lot of uh, uh, trouble. It didn't cause any trouble. It was just like we're going to put our heads down and we're going to make it work. And you know, I'm really serious about that. That was there was no there was no conflict. It was like we're doing it. Yeah, there was very little discussion. It was just so clear that, that the work needed to be done. So um, we did it. Yep. What's the difference of doing um, 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 a short film and a feature film? Um, I think I told you something at the very beginning. <laughs> I, I said, I said, you know, doing a short film or a commercial or a music video is like a 50-yard dash, 50-meter dash, I guess. Uh, a, a movie is a marathon. I mean, this is a, it's a long process, uh, even in the, even in the best cases, in this case, obviously, we're making a whole other movie once we get into post because we have all the visual effects and so, and so on to do it. But this is a long process. So that, I think, is the major difference. For, yeah, I would, for me. I would agree for sure. It, it's definitely, uh, it, it, in that marathon, you might have other little short bursts of, of, uh, of stuff, but over a long enough timeline, yeah, it's definitely, it's... Uh, they're long. I mean, I, I had my first meeting on Sonic in 2016, May of 2016, and mm -hmm. now the film's coming out in February of 2020. So it's it's a long it's a long cruise. But um, there's so much there's a lot of, 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 of sort of fun and exciting stuff that happens along the way that it doesn't it doesn't feel because like it's years almost and three years movies. Years. It's almost three movies. The development is mm -hmm. one movie. Mm -hmm. The production is another movie, and then the post production is a whole other movie. And now we're kind of in the, the marketing stage, which is a whole other movie. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we've been uh, so involved in the marketing of this movie as well. Like, you know, it's, it's a, this movie is a full-time job, even though I have a lot of other movies going on. This is a full-time job. And, uh, you know, I'm honored to be involved with it. And, and, I, and I love the end result. So uh, it's fun. Yeah, you had not only to tackle the animation side, you had also to tackle the um, live action side, yes. which must have been totally new to you. Mm -hmm. So, bravo! Oh, yeah. thank you. Uh, no, it was it was great. I mean, it was. Uh, I mean, having the cast that I had. I mean, I think I, I just hit the jackpot. I mean, they were all just so talented and wonderful to work with, and then came to set. So many great ideas, and, and it just it felt like a true collaboration. And, and Tim Miller gave me a really great piece of advice. I sat next to Tim uh, at Blur Studio for 15 years. He, he did Deadpool, and what he told me, he said, "Don't be afraid to ask for help." Like people will actually really respect that that mm. you're that you're and not only respect it but be excited about about pitching in to help because I've never made a live action movie before I my I felt like my job was to show up with a vision and a lot of enthusiasm and and to ask, and then and has to say hey guys how, you know let's let's go make this thing let's go make this great movie um, but I'm gonna have questions and, and I will appreciate you know your help every step of the way and I just and I felt like that was great advice because I saw it happening I saw yeah. the way people responded I, I just rather than it being me trying to bluff my way through not knowing how to do something or that my idea is always the best idea it's like that's not how how good stuff gets made it's it's best idea wins and uh, it just it, it really when you give people that opportunity it just you really see them kind of just just come to life and, and appreciate it. We tried to bring people that we had worked with in the past, like Steve Windham, our DP, who had done a number of Fast and Furious mm -hmm. for us, introduce them to Jeff, you know, not say this is the direct, uh, director of photography you have to use, but meet him, this is somebody I really like who I think could help you. And there was a number of uh, people along the way that, that we did that were just, we were able to build a really good supporting team and all the cast that we hired, you know, were Sonic fans as well. So, and everybody was there for the, the same reason, was to make something good, fun, entertaining. Mm -hmm. how, how did you get in contact with the uh, whole idea of Sonic? Um, well, somebody who works with me, Toby Asher, who actually started as an intern in my office, then was an assistant, then was an executive, uh, has been a huge Sonic fan all his life, and. Uh, 
he uh, came to, us, to me and said, I, I really think we should do a Sonic movie. And then he went and he pursued the rights for quite a while. You know, nothing moves that quickly when you're trying to acquire the rights to a big IP. And he just kept at it and uh, um, we were able to get the rights and we just kept pushing. It's, you know, being a producer is pushing a ball uphill and everybody else is pushing the ball downhill. And that's really what this was. It was kind of push, 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 you know, and, uh, you know, now we're sitting here on the, getting ready to release the movie, which we can't wait for the, uh, the general public to see. Mm. But, but when we produce films in Germany, we, uh, we, are, we are going nuts if our budget is over 15 million. Uh -huh. Then it will, it's, oh my goodness. And, and, um, we had, we had, uh, I think pre-production on your side had, uh, must have been 50 million alone. I, I don't like to. No. I, I, don't like, I don't like to talk about the money, but all I can say is, is that in the movies that I have been lucky enough to make, have, were much bigger budgets than this. So I think Jeff and our team has been able to put an incredible amount on the screen for a reasonable budget. Yeah. Questions from your side, because I invited you to ask questions. Where are your questions? Over there. Uh, you were talking about the cast, and um, um, was it risky for you to cast Jim Carrey? Because you know, everybody has seen the documentary, Jim and Annie knows what can happen if it goes into very deep method acting, so... Annie but here's the thing is, is, you, you know, when you're trying to do something special, you shoot for the stars. To me, there's nobody better in the, uh, the comic genre than uh, Jim Carrey. I've been a fan of his my entire, you know, movie-going life. And I was like, when, when the idea was brought up, we were like, sure, we were a little nervous, but we were like, let's go for it. Like, who could make this more special mm -hmm. than, than Jim Carrey? And I think, I think his performance of this is exactly the way people want to see Jim Carrey. He was, he's so happy that he got to do it again, kind of go into that world. Like we just had dinner with him last night. Like he would love to play this character again. And we had an incredible experience with him. He brought something special every day. And uh, I would do it again in a second. Yeah, just can't say enough wonderful things about that man. I mean, he just had so much fun playing the character, and I, I feel like you will absolutely see that when you see the movie. It's just he just enjoyed every minute of it, and had so many wonderful I'm ideas. Mm -hmm. And 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 even just his relationship with Stone is is I mean, all that was he just would show up with these great pitches, and we would just do all the stuff, and it was just it was a blast. That whole dancing sequence, like yeah. he just <laughs> kind of made it up. Jeff was talking about last night, you know that. We, we built that set there, it happened to be that rolling chair there. It wasn't like planned for him to do all this stuff. And he came out and I was like, ah, this, I mean, every day he came up with brilliant ideas. So uh, um, maybe it was a little scary at the very beginning, but to me that's what's made it special. And yeah, the film heavily related to visual effects and animation uh, riffing on the set is... We just let it go. We just, we really? just went for it. Yeah, because I, I thought uh, when I saw the movie, I've seen it twice now. Uh, I think if, if a, mu a movie is good, it has to have a very good bad guy. Yes. And it has a very good bad yeah. guy, I think. Yeah. And, and uh, he's m at some <coughs> times in the movie, he's more animated than the animated main character. <laughs> <laughs> Was that one uh, idea behind it that you, you thought, uh, having seen the mask and, and the stuff he did, that he's... Well, you knew that was coming. I mean, that's what you. Yeah, when you when you hire Jim Carrey, that's what you hope for. So <laughs> that's exactly what we got. And another thing is, is I think you're right. I think a, a great movie has to have a great villain, but I don't think it can just be bad all the time. I think there is, you know, there's there's views into humanity to him as well. So I think it's it's like the gray that makes it uh, an interesting villain. No, he's very melancholic. Yeah. If he stays still, he, yeah. you see. At some point, rooting for him because yes. also he's getting into the wily coyote position. Yeah. He wants to catch Sonic, and he will fail all the time. Yeah. So he's getting more and more interesting than the the main character. Right. Is that something you have to? How did you come up with this original story and this coming? Is that how much have you to, to be close to the game and, and how free? Could you be an inventing well, new thing? Well, I mean, the game uh, there is isn't much in terms of a backstory. Um, what we just really wanted to work on the most was just how do we make Sonic relatable? How do we make him as a as a film character just uh, somebody you're rooting for, somebody you're invested in emotionally? How do we give him a really great arc? Um, and I, I just really love this idea 
that we had up uh, very early on with the writers, which is that his powers have actually sort of the source of his of him have created the situation where he's an outsider. Like mm -hmm. he's told, look, the bad guys are going to come after you. You need to keep your head down. If they, you know if they find out that you have these powers. And so what it, traditionally is what's celebrated about Sonic is he's got this incredible super speed and, and, and there's just, just this sort of big, fun, confident personality. But as a sort of twist to that, just for this, the, the purpose of telling a story with this movie, what if that power also created this kind of, a little bit of a, of a challenge for him and, and sort of living this sort of kind of isolated existence, wanting friendship, wanting community, but the, the, his power was sort of preventing him from having that. But then being able to come full circle, because one thing we always knew was at the end of this movie, this has to be the Sonic that uh, that is one hundred percent a match for sort of the uh, from the original nineteen ninety one game, where it's like mm -hmm. confident, full control of his powers. But I feel like you go to movies to see to be told stories about how your characters become heroes. Like you don't want him to be a hero from from minute one. You want to see. Like how did how did this character get? I there? think that that opening scene with Sonic and the turtle really sets up uh, who he is, mm -hmm. and uh, I think his need for friendship is really the kind of the driving force um, of the movie. Uh, and uh, some kind of death of a mother figure mm -hmm. also, uh, right? Yeah. Just to create the loneliness, yeah. That he's he's on his own on a strange world, and and. And, in, and so in love with, with people and with our culture and, and just just a, just loves everything about us, but is, it ha has to sort of be looking in from, from the outside. Um, it just felt like the right dramatic plus, setup. But there's so many Easter eggs for the fans all, mm. all throughout the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, in watching it with test audiences. That's not a game. Uh, <laughs> and, and watching it with test audiences yes, and uh, <laughs> watching them react to that is really, it's really special. I would like uh, um, that's more question to him, I think. Um, coming up as a franchise, as a producer, mm. and this is clearly aiming at a sequel or uh, uh, more, um, is it very hard to do? I never, ever approach anything like that. I always like, let's make one great movie and then figure out where to go from that, like, you know. Even we have like two post-credit scenes which are hinting yeah. slightly. Yes, but, but it's, to me it's way, make one great movie and then let the audience tell us they want more. I mean, it's, la it's not like on any Fast and Furious we're ever really saying, okay, the next movie is going to be this. Th we're always like, let's make a great movie and then we'll figure out the next movie. Okay. I, think it's, I think that when you plan too far ahead and get ahead of yourself, I don't think it works. Um, you know, it's always like, let's make a great one and we'll figure out where to go. And my favorite scene is the thing in the hotel when James Marston and Sonic are together and, and the relaxing moment comes mm -hmm. and, and I thought, my goodness, that's every parent in the room mm -hmm. will say, well, yes, exactly, that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, how did you come up with that? Because that told me this film is not for children alone. This is a thing parents can enjoy very much also. I think anything that you can do that is relatable to people makes it enjoyable and we were looking for relatable moments. It's obviously it's a it's a movie with a CGI hedgehog. So how do you how do you make that relatable to uh, normal people and what relationships are and we you know the, the whole idea of you know kind of having a, a teenager uh, uh, as parents I think uh, is a re can be relatable. And make sure the best way to to make people relate to something, or do you prefer? Uh, I mean, it's it? certainly a powerful one. I mean, I think uh, it's funny. I was I was thinking about this earlier this morning because I, in art school, one of the first things you do uh, in the animation program is is you do you animate a flower sack. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this kind of thing, but like, because they want to just give you a character that's so simple, has no expression, no face, not like the bare minimum amount of stuff, and say, go, like, can you make a flower sack look? sad or happy or excited just purely through body language and, and it's just incredible what what an animator can do i mean or another i guess think of aladdin and the magic carpet and like how much personality an inanimate inanimate object can have mm -hmm. so i do think animation is, is is so powerful for communicating performance because it just you really can do so much with so little and, and then you take a character like sonic and then you and you give him facial expression and performance and, and it really is an incredibly powerful tool for 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 creating characters and and it's funny you mentioned that motel 
scene because it's one of my favorite mom moments in the whole film in terms of an animation performance because I knew we could do all the humor and, and all the action stuff is all great. We had so much fun designing all that, but having crafting this little moment of just James and, and Sonic, Tom and Sonic, sitting next to each other, you know, each on, on beds and having this little conversation and Sonic just kind of wondering about his future. It was just like, and the animator just did such an incredible job on it. I was just like, okay, this this is what makes me so happy that we were able to feel like we were able to make Sonic a real character and give a real performance. Um, in, in animation, uh, there's a very famous silly symphony in the 30s, the Tortoise MC Hare from mm -hmm. Disney, where he plays the uh, hares playing tennis with himself. Uh, um, and they, they tried to find out how fast you could go mm -hmm. in animation, and that was a very, very, it's a very interesting film. Uh, one second. Um, and in the end, uh, you have Chuck Jones and Tex Avery, and it's, there's no in-between anymore. There's mm. just the, the fast action. Uh, and you scale it down a little bit. It's not so fast, but you see it's something between those. For you, it must be very difficult, because I think that was your first real venture into animation. Yes, it was. And there must be a huge learning curve on yeah, your side. Definitely and you, was. you had to trust him very yeah. much in that. Well, you know, you watch the, the first time you watch the movie, you watch it without a Sonic character in there. So it's like, you know, it, 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 you know I'm, I'm, I'm not used to that. Um, uh, so it was, it was trust, but as the anim you know, I was so excited each day to see any shot we were getting. It just started to fill out the movie and you could feel the emotion of the movie uh, started to come out and, you know, I, I looked forward to that weekly, you know, email where here's, here's the shots that we're going to see this, this uh, week very much. It was, it really, it's one of those things where you to, to see it slowly come together is amazing. Could, could you tell, teach him a little bit? <laughs> oh, I, I, I did my best. I came up with like sports car analogies and all kinds of stuff. I'm like, how can I, how can I help Neil understand how this process works? But he did great. Yeah. <laughs> but it is. That, I think. It, I think. What, what, it's funny to hear you say like that. You enjoy that because if you do enjoy that, I mean, that really is the visual effects. It takes so long for the stuff to to to, to mm. get made. You have to enjoy all these little things, like oh, this morning, like oh, Sonic's got his cowboy hat on. Like you get these yeah. little like, like, and you're just seeing it come to life, one little incremental <laughs> step uh, to the next. But it just, it, it's always for me. I just love it. And, and then you get your first pass of the render, and it's got the fur and the lighting and all, and it's just you really see it come to life, like well, literally, it, like a day or week at a time. But it was funny. So the last week or so, you know, we we finished this movie a few weeks ago, and we're like, oh god, okay, it's done. But then all of a sudden, we're like, we were, we had to get this Super Bowl commercial ready, and so all of a sudden we were thrown right back into it. Like, okay, we got to get the Sonic part. So even like last night at like midnight, uh, we were texting back and forth with these new shots that you know. It's, yeah. <laughs> it was interesting to kind of dive back into it for a couple of days to try and get this this finalized. Yeah, I wanted to ask since you have also like an animation VFX background, how much you were involved in the whole post-production process, and uh, how much did your hands-on experience help you do that? And he was involved every minute of every day. I couldn't help myself. Yeah. I feel bad. <laughs> I feel bad for the animation supervisor because I was just so. I, I, they're so used to working, I think, with directors that don't even really know what they're looking at a lot of times. And I was just like, I love that process, and I love interfacing with with the with the teams and the artists and like. And, and I can give. I mean, I think it's also on some level though helpful to them because I can give pretty specific feedback rather than just you giving something like, uh, this isn't really working, but I can't, I don't really know why it's not working. Why don't you just try some stuff? You, you tell, it's like you, you want, you want to get specific feedback and direction so that so as an animator, an artist, or a compositor, you can go and, and, and accomplish, you know, the, the task and make it great. So, um, but I, I just, I, I love the process and, and I love working with the animators and all the gags, you know, like the, the, the motel room scene we have where he's zipping around, he's got to be doing like nine or ten different things all at once, and it was just so fun to design that and just break up the, 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 the screen into all these little different, uh, uh, you know, little uh, compartments and just design little jokes. Uh, um, it was just uh, fantastic. What's always so amazing to me, though, is like our editing room was basically, you know, our whole editing suite was no bigger than this kind of room that we're all in. Uh, right now and it's just you know the, the I don't know 20 people in that room we're dealing with obviously we have vendors sending in VFX shots 
but it's so weird. Like, there's 20 of you working on this movie, kind of in this cloak and dagger thing, and then all of a sudden the movie's done and you unleash it to everybody in the world. It's every time on every movie I make, it's always, the, to me, the most amazing thing, how you're kind of making it with this small little group, and then boom. Here in Berlin, we're talking about this movie. We were in this little room in Culver City making this, so it's, it's very interesting. Who? Okay, you will have, because he's a camera lady. No. Yeah. But do I have the last question? <laughs> yeah. um, first of all, this is coming from a lifelong Sonic fan, so thank you for the work you put in. Thanks to the team and everyone else. I was wondering, um, obviously there's a few Easter eggs and certain song choices that are made for the fans. How was interaction with the fans? You um, got to work with Tyson Hess mm -hmm. for the redesign mm -hmm. and yeah. Hyper Potions also did a song that was used in the trailer and everything, and mm -hmm. that was a good moment for me. Mm -hmm. um, how was working with the fan base? I mean, it's. I mean, you just have to respect the fans. I mean, the fact that this character has been around for 28, 29 years. I mean, the reason we have this opportunity is because the, the people that have loved Sonic for so long. So it's just that that going back to the redesign. It's just you just have to respect and appreciate their love of the character and so you're just you really have this feel like you're entrusted with this sacred responsibility to sort of like treat this do do this character right um, but I mean we, we certainly were like Tyson was amazing and just the nicest guy and so hardworking and so helpful everyone at Sega Aaron Weber that runs a lot of their social media stuff was always helpful we were just so happy to come in and to talk about stuff so that was most of our kind of interface I mean as we were working on the film was through through them I mean now to sort of get to I mean I, I love all the fan art that, that is being generated by I love seeing that I love reposting it on Twitter I mean I look at everything I just it's so exciting as Neil is saying it's like you work on this thing in this little just literally in this room in, in Culver City and you're just working these long hours and it's it's all secretive you're just you, but now that it's out there in the world and, and scenes are starting, you know, clips from the movie are out there and to see people respond and be so positive and excited, I mean, it's just the best. I mean, I just even on the hardest day on this movie, I, I would not trade this job for anything. I mean, like it's just the, so great. The, the scene where uh, Sonic shakes and he becomes this kind of flipped off. <laughs> like, we only came up, honestly, with that scene, I don't know, uh, a few weeks from the end of post-production on this movie, Jeff came up with this idea. So this, you know, so we do this. So then to see it come on to uh, online and you know millions of people react to it, it's just amazing how how quick it can happen. It's it's so fun. Yeah, and and to to I mean, it really feels like you hit your stride just with every with all the artists like every like animators. You just notice they're turning over shots faster, faster, faster because it takes a little while. You have six or seven animators. Everyone's kind of learning the character. And then as you get towards the end of the movie, everyone is just, oh, this is, that's, that's what Sonic would do here, or that's what the, the face he would make in that situation. And everybody's just like, they're so, I mean, it's just so great to see. Like everyone just hits their stride and is doing such great work. And so then at that, that end of the process is when we're just like, we actually had the, the freedom, a, a little uh, opportunity to, to do some of these additional gags. And they're some of my favorite in the movie. And it's just funny because they all came uh, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the end of the process. Was it hard to, to, to work with all the different studios all over the world, NBC in Canada, uh, Blur Studios, and, and Tricks in Munich, and, and uh, uh, so many places we have to deal with, uh, the different time zones and different artists. But you talk so much that, I mean, it's, it, these things are all about communication and just communicating and, and, and talking and, and it just, as long as you're, the channels are open, that, that it makes the work a lot easier because um, that, that, that if people have questions, if they have ideas, like so, we we would just interface with everyone as often as we could, and it certainly is tricky because like Japan, uh, Marza, who who did some really great work on um, the backstory, all the, the Sonic Island shots were done by Marza, and they look beautiful. Um, but they're on a completely different time schedule, so we would stay a little bit later in the evening in LA because that would be their morning, and and, and so and communicating in person is is, is just is or in person like on Skype is, is so much better than trying to write emails and or do it by like communicate with my girlfriend it's <laughs> getting tricky so <laughs> I could imagine that dealing with different uh, uh, cultural uh, uh, styles and, and, and not only the time zones but, but artists have an ego and that's quite quite interesting and get to deal with so much people that uh, and I'm amazing and there's no gray hair <laughs> I died it this morning. So. <laughs> if I had Harry, it would be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 good shot. Good shot. Yeah, Very good shot. Very good shot. Any last question <laughs> from your side? I think we did also. I have already overtime or what? Uh, so great. <laughs>
I hope yeah. you guys all enjoyed. Uh, has everybody got to see the movie yeah. yet? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really good. great job. Okay. Thanks so much. You guys yeah. enjoyed it? Yes. 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 All right. We love tales. Uh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. We'll yeah. Yeah, we'll <laughs> okay. But speaking of that, did you guys also have like a previous design of Tails, or did he show up uh, after the redesign? Like, no, it was always, it was always. <laughs> I mean, look, we know fans love these characters, and we like to, to make a Sonic movie and to not tease or allude to any other uh, of the, these fan favorites would have been a huge mistake. So it was, it was there was always going to be a, a teaser, an Easter egg kind of version of Tails, but. Uh, how much I mean, it was great because once that uh, once we had some really good momentum with, with the film, Paramount and Sega were like, let's just we, we had a very teasing version of it where you didn't actually see uh, and he didn't wasn't delivering a line on camera, but then then uh, they got very excited about uh, how the the, the general uh, uh, response to the film, and so they're like, let's absolutely do it. So that was great. Great. Yeah. I've only seen the German version. I'm keen to see the original version because I think. Always something lost in translation. I'm keen to see the German version. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, same opposite. I uh, would like to. I have one more question. Uh, this more physical one. Would you stand over there and we would like to do a photo with all of us? Sure. Because yeah. you are famous, we are not. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs>